Hello. In this video, we are going to use the method of Lagrange multipliers to find an expression for the so-called generalized partition function. The generalized partition function is one of the central ideas in statistical mechanics, so this video is important. Please you ensure that you have understood the method of Lagrange multipliers before watching this video, and also that you are comfortable with the expression for the value of the information function for a non-uniform probability distribution. OK, so given that you have not stopped the video, I am going to assume that you understand information and Lagrange multipliers. Let's crack on. In the first of the videos on statistical mechanics, the video where I discussed Boltzmann, I introduced the notion of a microstate. I said that a microstate was a set of positions and momentums for all the atoms in the system. I then said that the set of all possible microstates, so the set of all possible positions and momenta that the system could have, is referred to as phase space. In addition, I showed this example of a phase space for a very simple system. In this phase space, the system can be a one of five possible microstates, and each of these is characterized by a different vector for the positions and velocities of each of the atoms in the system. In real applications, there are usually either an extremely large number of possible microstates or an infinite number of possible microstates. It is thus difficult to provide a representation of phase space. The argument when the microstates is enormous runs similar to the one I will present here for this phase space with five microstates, however. Each of the microstates in phase space will have a value for the various extensive thermodynamic quantities. So in our five-state example, each microstate has an associated value for its internal energy, its volume, and its number of atoms. Now the question you are hopefully asking yourself is what are thermodynamic states? That is to say, what does it mean microscopically when we say in ther classical thermodynamics that the state of the system is characterised by a particular set of thermodynamic variables? The answer is this is the answer to this question is twofold. We construct a thermodynamic state by requiring two things of our set of microstates. The first of these two things comes about because we fix some of the extensive variables. We might, for example, fix the number of atoms in the system and not allow the system to occupy microstates with different numbers of atoms within them. We can write this type of constraint mathematically using a delta function as shown here. Here, we are constraining the delta function to be greater than zero, which is only true when ni, the value of n for microstate i, is equal to the number of the atoms that we require, capital N. To make this type of constraint completely transparent, I have said that two of the microstates in the extended phase, in the example phase space shown at the top of this slide, do not have ni equal to n. We thus needn't consider them any further, so I have covered them with blue squares to indicate that these microstates are simply not prohibited. The next thing that we do when we're constructing our thermodynamic states from the microstates is that we require the expectation for all the extensive thermodynamic variables that we have not constrained we require that these quantities are not infinite. Remember that the average value of or expectation of a quantity is given by the expression shown at the bottom of the slide here. The summations run over all the permitted microstates and have inside them the probability of being in each microstate multiplied by the value of the extensive variable of interest for that particular microstate. Notice also that we use a letter inside angle brackets to note the expectation of a quantity in physics. On this slide, we thus use the letters capital E and capital V inside angle brackets to denote the expectation of the energy and the expectation for the volume. Ensuring that the expectation for these quantities are not infinite 
means that we have to introduce a set of probabilities, a set of PI values, for all the permitted microstates. Hence, in our example phase space, each of the three permitted microstates now has a probability associated with it. And these probabilities are set so that the expectation of the energy and the expectation of the volume are both not infinite. We now need to recall another idea from that original video on statistical mechanics, namely the principle of equal a priori probabilities. This principle, if you remember, told us that an isolated system is equally likely to be in any one of the accessible microstates. It is here that the information comes in. Remember that the information contained in a probability distribution is given by this expression shown here. In addition, the information is minimised when the probability distribution P is uniform. Now comes the critical realisation. We can determine the probability of being in any given microstate by finding the probability distribution that minimises the information, but we have to do this minimisation subject to the constraints on the average values of the extensive thermodynamic variables. With all this in mind, let's summarise the problem we have to solve. We have to minimise the information function shown at the top of this slide subject to the, two to the three constraints shown in the middle of the slide. Notice the last constraint here comes about because we are calculating a probability and we know that the sum of all the elements in a probability distribution must be equal to 1. This is a probability property of probability distributions that you learnt about at school. Returning to our problem then, we have a constrained optimization problem. We have learnt in previous videos that we can solve these using the method of Lagrange multipliers, which means that we are ready to go. Well, almost. Before we solve the problem, I'm just going to make one small change to the nomenclature here to make things more general. I am not going to say that the extensive variables energy and volume must have a finite average. Instead, I am going to say that some set of extensive thermodynamic variables must have a finite average as shown here. In other words, each of my microstate is going to have a value for these various B super K quantities. The value of this quantity for microstate i is going to be given the symbol b underscore superscript k, b underscore i superscript k, as shown in the summation here. The average value of this quantity is then going to be given the symbol b superscript k in angle brackets. Now notice that I can have more than one value for k, so I can include multiple constraints like these. With that cleared up, let's now continue. Here is the statement of the problem once more. We want to minimise the information, which is shown in the top left of this slide, subject to the constraint of normalisation of the probability distribution, P, as shown in the centre of the slide, and the constraints on the average values of our BK quantities that are shown on the right of this slide. When this minimisation is completed, we are going to find all the various PI values in our probability distribution. In other words, we are going to find the probability of being in each of the various microstates. To do this constrained optimization, we are going to use the method of Lagrange multipliers. And as always, our first step when applying this method is going to be to construct our extended function and to thereby convert our constrained optimization problem into an unconstrained optimization problem. The extended function for the problem we are interested in here is shown on the slide. I have taken a few liberties in writing out this function just because these tricks will make our life easier later on. The main trick is that I have chosen to maximize minus the information 
rather than max minimizing the information itself. These two ways of solving the problems are obviously equivalent, though. The second trick that I have done is that I have written all the Lagrange multipliers as a product of KB, the constant of proportionality in the expression for the information, multiplied by a scalar quantity, lambda 0 or lambda k. This ensures that this constant will cancel later in the derivations. I should also make clear some of the nomenclature that I have used here. The curly brackets around the pi indicate that I have a set of these quantities. In other words, our extended function, capital L, depends on all the pi values. Notice that I also have curly braces around the lambda k, implying that I have a set of lambda k values. values. I need this because I have constrained the average values of multiple extensive variables in writing the last sum shown in the extended function. This is why the last sum is a double sum over k with an internal sum over i. I should point out one final thing. In the last two terms, where I have, in the middle term, sorry, where I have the sum over i of pi, minus 1, I mean the minus 1 to be outside of the summation. I have gotten this by rearranging the constraint at the centre of the top line in the slide. A similar thing holds for this final summation. The bk in angle brackets is outside the summation over i that is before it. We now proceed with the second step of the method of Lagrange multipliers which, if you remember, involves finding the unconstrained optimum of the extended function. For us, this is going to mean taking the first derivative of the extended function with respect to pj. Pause the video for a moment and see if you can calculate this derivative for yourself. you should have got the following. It's easiest to look at the differential of the second term in the extended function first. Here we have kb multiplied by lambda 0 multiplied by the sum over all i of pi. Then subtracted from this, we are going to have kb times lambda 0. Notice that I have multiplied the bracket out in saying this out loud, and remember that, as I've explained, I mean the minus 1 term in the equation shown here to be outside of the summation. The derivative of the minus 1 bit is thus just 0 because it does not depend on pj. In terms of the derivative of the summation, I know that the derivative of pi with respect to pj will be 0 if i is not equal to j and will be 1 if i and j are equal. Hence, when I take the derivative of this sum, I am left with 1. I thus have the derivative of this whole second term is equal to simply minus kb multiplied by lambda 0. In terms of the derivatives of the first term and the last term, I can apply a similar logic. Only one term in each of these sums, the term for which i equals just j, will make any contribution to the derivative, so these sums are reduced to single terms. In the final term, I have to keep the sum over k, though, and I thus end up with the final term shown here in my derivative. Meanwhile, to calculate the derivative of the first term, I have to exploit the product rule. As promised, the factors of kb cancel at this stage. I can do this, remember, because I have set the equation equal to 0, as I am looking for a maximum. I can now rearrange the whole expression to get the following. Notice that I have introduced the, capital, the constant capital psi here to replace the factor of lambda 0 plus 1. 
Taking anti-logarithms of both sides, I thus get to the following expression for being in microstate J. We are now almost there. All we are going to do now is to find an expression for capital Psi. We will do this by remembering that Pj is the probability of being in microstate J. And as such, if we take the sum of Pj over all the microstates, we must have that this summation is equal to 1. Substituting the Pj that we have just determined into this summation, we find the following. We then recognise that capital Psi does not depend on the index that we are summing over, and that as such, this term can be taken out of the summation. When the resulting expression is rearranged, we thus find that e to the psi is given by the following sum. This quantity, e to the capital psi, which can be evaluated by taking the summation, is the quantity that we set out to calculate, the generalised partition function. In physics, the partition function is often given the symbol z, as shown here. As we shall see in subsequent videos, the partition function is really the central quantity in statistical mechanics. To summarise then, we have arrived at the following two key results. The first of these tells us the probability of being in microstate J. The second is the expression for the generalised partition function that appears in the denominator of our expression for the probability of being in microstate J. We derive these expressions by finding the minimum value of the information subject to some constraints. This was done using the method of Lagrange multipliers. Hopefully you did not find the maths presented too difficult and you understood all the various parts. If you did not, please watch the video a second time and see if you understand it on the second go through. Thank you for your attention.